Welcome back to Hacker Hangouts on a Saturday morning, jumping into company culture. And one of the biggest things with company culture, start things on time when you say you're going to start them. Not five minutes afterwards while you're dealing with technical difficulties, but we're here. I don't know. And? Company culture was such a weird topic in some ways, but then when we started jumping into it, it was recommended on the Discord channel, which is awesome. You want to join, go ahead. There's like a link down below. But it had me thinking, I'm not even sure how much I'm going to be able to like add to this one because up until I'm, I started my own company, I've never had a good company culture. Like, have you ever experienced what you would ex like say, this is a good – I'm going to probably get all of you in trouble if that's not the case for your current company. But uh, Yeah, I mean, for sure. Uh, my my last company that I just left, uh, you know, three three four months ago, um, had uh, an amazing culture, I would say. But it, I think this is this is difficult because I think when people talk about company culture, they talk about it at different levels, right? So like you have your immediate work group culture, then you have like your We'll, we'll call it like immediate office culture, which is not necessarily the same because people still tend to be clicky and stuff. And then you have like the general corporate culture. And eventually that turns into like the business culture as to how the business does business. Right. And then eventually like some of those that stuff eventually seeps down into the different levels. Right, because companies can buy other companies, and those other companies will have their own cultures. But then eventually, you you like amalgamate into this general culture, and it becomes very bland, we'll say. Um, but still, in those like that low level, you know, I've experienced very good, we'll say, small and medium level company culture, while having very very frustrating big company culture. Um, the the and, question, yeah. The question I have on that is, is you're saying it was good company culture. Now, you you previously worked at a giant enterprise. So I think that's the other thing that you're going to differentiate this is whether you're working at a small company or a large enterprise. I guess maybe even start simply with this is what what is company culture? I'm going to try and adjust my mic so I'm not like staring into it there. Ooh, there we go. What, what is company culture? It's probably even simpler. I think we all know what it is, but like, well, how do you describe it? You guys want to take a crack or you want me to? I actually think that Gary had it. There's levels of it. You have the business culture. So what the business actually does as far as running itself, the decisions that it makes. And then I also think that you have the employee culture for lack of a better term of how employees interact with each other outside of like labels and management and whatever. So do you hang out? Do you party at the office? Do you talk with people? Are you like heads down with somebody cracking a whip over your head? What's going on? I, I think I would expand that too, is the feeling you get at work, like very simply, like are, do you feel like some of the stress you're feeling? How do you deal with stress at work? Like in some ways, like I hate to do this, but in some ways, like work kind of has to become your family. And I'm going to, I'll pull back on this in a second because I think that's kind of a gross way of saying it. But like for me, I work at a small company. It's my, co it's, it's my company. I founded the company and things like that. We're not big. And I spend a significant amount of time with with these people. Who are you calling these people? I, I spend a lot of time with with these people, like almost in some ways more than I spend with my own family. It's weird when I think about it. I'm staring at a screen more than I am st staring at the real world. Now, that's not a great balance, but I think there's certain things that will just destroy the culture or at least set really terrible precedents. If I call an employee at five o'clock on Friday and I'm like, let's have a meeting like, nope, that's <laughs> that doesn't. So it's 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 almost being like cognizant. I care more about your team, your team members than you do about like the work effort. And I know that sounds weird, but like I know that has that continues to develop a good culture. So I don't know. That was kind of maybe that wasn't a definition, but I think the culture is like sort of how you do the work, too. So Not the just expectations, the other pieces. The expectations of going through and what you're supposed to be doing at work, uh, the work ethic, if you will, to where are you going 24 by 7 or are you during certain business hours? 
Uh, what's the expectation there to where do you need to be able to get be able to get in a hold of at any point in time, whether that's your job in your job description or not can very much affect uh, the the ethos or I would say when you're talking about company culture, it can also mean what <clears throat> the end goals are for the company and that driving factor for that company. So some folks may be, we've got to make sure that we're supporting our customers 24 by seven. So if rain or shine, if you get called, you're in the office or online versus other ones are, hey, it's, it is an absolute nine to five. So you clock in at nine, you clock out at five, and we don't expect to hear from you until the next working day. That's completely fine. Uh, I agree with your guys' definitions that there are different levels of it. So you, you've got your immediate team that you're working with. You've got your geolocated team, if you will. And then you've got like middle management and upper management. And when it comes to some of the uh, culture, when you guys are talking about different levels, I'd also say there is a element of how easy or appropriate is it for you to be able to talk with your team and then like their managers and their managers' managers. Some people see that as stabbing in the back. Other people, it's completely open to where you could talk to anybody in the company and you're completely fine. Yeah. I mean, I, I think the easiest way to, to explain this is like step one, let, let's talk about the business uh, as a structure itself. Because mm -hmm. it's like if you're in the military, the type of business that you're doing is vastly different than if you're working at uh, you know, a giant corporation that only does contracting to the government versus a small startup that hinge, potentially, you know, at a small, small startup, uh, success or failure can hinge on any single person in the entire company, whether or not you land a deal, whether or not you successfully fill uh, a contract, things like that. And so all of those cultures are going to be different by nature of the structure of those businesses. Gulo, what, what do you got? So the different levels i almost feel like the different levels are based off of what i can impact so um at several companies i've worked at i've driven company culture in well gulo ways and that's what's become of company culture in certain aspects of it i can't change the business i can't change like middle management sure. or upper management stuff but the people i'm around i definitely can impact what the company's doing and what the culture is going to be like so let me let me let me uh, let me finish my thought though. So why why I say at the top level you look at the business culture because depending on what situation you're operating in dictates in order to have a healthy business culture, uh, you need to have leaders that give you the appropriate top cover dependent on uh, what uh, what business you're operating from within. So so let me let me give you an example of that. In the military, you're on call 24 seven, you can come in, you know, you can be called in at any time. What does that mean? You need sufficient top cover, you need leaders that are going to say, Okay, we just called everybody in for a week straight when they should have been off for three or four days or whatever the case. So I'm going to do everything that I can to get them extra days off. And I'm going to do what I can to ensure that they have, you know, they feel appropriately compensated, knowing that I can't give them money, right? It is, it is an impossibility of me giving them additional wages in the military. So that's not an option, and that's a structure of that business, right? Not really business; it's government. In a startup, you can basically say, "Well, hey, man, this is the job. You can take it or leave it." And maybe you get performance bonuses. Maybe you get performance, and that can be a form of top cover where you feel like you're appropriately rewarded. So that's why I say company culture in some senses starts at the overall structure of the business and what leadership can do to support uh, their workers to ensure that, you know, you, you are able to have a functional, uh, sus, you know, sub society within your business. And you can do what you just said, which is affect the day to day culture of how the business does its work and how people work together. And then you get into the, like the micro cultures in the office where you can drive openness, you can drive uh, the ability for anybody to challenge anything. And you know and what I say is like, do the appropriate science required for what we're doing. And that's a very computer science oriented way of uh, talking about it, but yeah. I think there's a there's a massive deviation. And I wanna talk because there's a couple conversations happening in chat, so I wanna kinda of talk through those a little bit. I, there is a massive difference between large, by the way, if I'm muting out and like coughing and whatnot, I'm like getting over the flu and it's fantastic. 
is there's, there's a massive difference between small company and large company because within when I was at I, again I use GE and I use my current company and even my current company is massively different than the company I was at right before that was a small consultant company but this time I'm I'm a peon at the old one I am now I will say the helm on, on this one and there's massive difference between all these GE was a terrible terrible culture it was horrible but it came down from but here's the thing is it's a ginormous company. I heard teams that had amazing culture. Like, they, they loved being on that team. Mine, I had a manager who worked a remarkable number of hours, felt that you had to punch a clock. It wasn't delivery-based. It was time-based, which doesn't really work for someone who's doing cybersecurity because for the fundamental reason that me and Gowry have brought up before. You can spend hours staring at the computer, not actually building anything, yet breaking out in a cold sweat because you're thinking through this problem so hard. And that doesn't work in that. I think a small company, it, it, like where I made the comment, like, f like, like family. And it's weird because it, it's different. Because if I would have heard that when I was at my last company, I would have flipped in the bird and said, like, Hold, are you kidding me? We're not family. You pay me. I, that's all I care about. Give me the money. Don't care about you. Don't care about your family. Not in a douche way. Just like, I, I don't care. Where now it's flipped and I'm now, let's say, at the helm, pushing down, I want to make sure that my employees, I care about them. I care about them in the mm -hmm. sense of like, if they're sick, get get away from the computer. I want I want them invested in the company long term, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years. And I can take, we'll say, a short term loss to get your, you're having, hey, you're having a stressful day. Your kids are sick. This project, the delivery, it can wait till next week. It's not an important thing. I will push off the client. And that's where I think, I'm coming maybe at this from a different perspective of I now care about my employees in a way I wouldn't have cared previously. Does that make right. any sense? So, and I'm going to say this very bluntly, you are the business. It's your business, right? And so what you've done is you've created a healthy business culture. That's what I'll say, right? Where it is expected that people are going to take care of themselves and you get your, you get your employees invested in your business and they feel like it's their business too, right? Whereas... You know, my last company, like you said, it was largely you know, fuck you, pay me. <laughs> yeah. Like, and that's um, the thing that's and, like, I think if you're, if you're, they, like, if you're, the, the, I want to say, if you're an employee, that's really all I cared about. Just get, just pay me. So, so continue on. So let's, let's drop this one because that's business culture. That is how the business runs and leads and all of those things, which is different than the micro cultures of how, people interact day to day. So I, I think most people understand what's a healthy and what's an unhealthy business culture in terms of like, are you always on crunch time? Are you always, you know, is everything always burning down all the time? Are you never allowed to take time off? Like everyone understands what an, ab an, an abusive relationship with your employer looks like. What does a healthy coworker culture look like? Assuming all of those things you know the business culture is okay at you know at least what is a what is a reasonable you know co-worker culture look like so i work in the gaming industry and i've been in the gaming industry for five six years now and it is parties we go out and we have dinners we'll set up a barbecue at the office we'll have drinks we have karaoke nights and movie nights and gaming nights and it's not necessarily we're at work working, but we will stay at the office longer to have fun and screw around and just be happy. Um, versus there are the company cultures where they try to keep you in the office longer and try to get you still working while you're in the office. And generally most of the studios minus crunch time, when we were screwing around, we were screwing around. That was, that was the whole plan. That was a game. There might be a couple of people working, but we were ordering pizzas, and drinking, and just having a jolly good time. It's funny because all of that depends on your coworkers, though. Because I remember oh, yeah. getting invited to those meetings at GE and going, yeah, no, I don't. Because I know it's going to happen. I don't. I want to go hang out with my family. I was newly married at that time. It was just me and the spouse. And I knew if I was at work, I wasn't hanging out with her, which I wanted to do. And they're like, Friday night, we're going out. And it's like, have fun. See you later. Uh, and then I wasn't a team player. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. So now, 
that's an interesting point to where between my old employer and current employer, uh, old employer would be, hey, we got work from nine to five. And then, hey, we're going to have this random get together at the local food spot. It's going to be outside of work. If you can make it great. If you can't, that's fine, too. And it would be an organization of about. Uh, I would say there was about 200 employees, but the, the core folks who usually came were about 50, which was still a pretty good group of folks. Certainly not everybody. Compared to uh, the current is that when we're going through and having like a team building exercise or we're actually working together, a happy hour is on the clock uh, to where you're not expected to go be doing work in this time frame. If you can show up, fantastic, great. You're literally drink in hand talking with your bosses or you're with your coworkers talking about how your work week or your personal projects are going for an hour a week. And that's just one example of it's on the clock, but there's no work. It's literally talking about you. Happy happy hours are great. The one that I really love that companies do are like the lunch and learns where you just have somebody go up there that's super excited about what they do. Um, most of the companies I've worked for, they do those. They usually buy lunch and everyone just sits around and this, somebody goes up there and just describes what they're passionate about and shows and teaches everyone else about it for an hour, hour and a half. So this is all. So, our, me, well, yeah, me, I'll let you go, and then I'll I'll then move us from another topic, which is like what you guys and you're gonna love you're gonna love this uh, a phrase. What you guys are describing is what in the military we called mandatory fun, um, because <laughs> in most cases those happy hours and those we'll say house parties and things like that they weren't optional. Uh, they they were optional whereas like either you were staying at work and working or you were going out with everyone to go do these things during working hours mm -hmm. a except for if there was a um, house party you know most of the single people would show up and in, in those things but i i've only recently appreciated the fact that like yeah i don't do a lot of those anymore because like silk i'm like i want to go home and be with my wife and my dog, right? Like I don't, I don't engage in mandatory fun anymore. And I don't think like I'll occasionally invite people to my, my hobby things. Like I'm more interested in people who are like, Hey, I have this thing. Like I'm blowing glass. If you guys want to come by and, and watch me blow glass or, you know, at this fair or whatever, or I'm playing music, invite me to all of those things because that I want to go to all of those things. But if it's just like, Hey, we're going out to the bar after work. I'm like, I'm good. I, I got enough of that in the military. I'm, I'm fine. Like I don't need any more mandatory fun in my life. Right. Yeah. I think. Oh, go on Gulo. That's actually fair. Um, a lot of the things that I didn't go to all of the events that happened, but I would definitely go if somebody threw on a rack of ribs on the barbecue at night and I smelled those before I left, I'm staying to eat something. And a lot of the gaming nights I would stay behind for because Unreal tournaments and just owning everyone that I work with, just quality <laughs> entertainment, quality so entertainment. I'm, I'm going to bring us, I actually even put a marker on, on the video, which is how do you build good company culture like just we've talked about our experiences how do you grow it with very practical things and i think like one of those things which is a killer is meetings mm. how do you be cognizant of company culture one with meetings and then the other topic i'm going to bring up is as a consultant i work with many 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 different businesses and every one of those businesses have their own culture some great some massively toxic and how do you stop their culture from impacting your culture so those are the two questions i'll pose but starting with the first one which is meetings how do you run meetings to facilitate a good company culture so i uh, i'll i'll take the helm on this one if you don't already have an agenda with the topic the topics that you're going through and working on then it could have been an email or if you had an hour slot and you get through the agenda and you're done, you say, okay, that's it. Any other questions, round tables? Sweet. You guys get however much time back. We're out of here. So you're quick, you're efficient and you're planned. When it comes to a work meeting, when it comes to like a water cooler style meeting, that agenda can kind of ebb and flow because you're literally there to shoot the shit. So that's the, the one difference I would say. And that's been very effective for us. Communication is a big part of culture for me. Oh, yeah. 100%. Yeah. It breaks down everywhere, though. 
every company that I've ever worked for, even volunteer groups of peers that I respect and get along with and have like we build cool projects together and then we quit communicating. We're like, hey, we're gonna work on this thing and then no one knows what anyone's doing and all we do is complain that no one knows what anyone's doing. And I'm like, this is back to the same thing I do at work. But most of the meetings I attend, I don't have an agenda. My boss may have an agenda that he wants to go through, but he doesn't, I'm not privy to that. It's surprise, here's more work for you to do. I, I'm, I'm gonna say probably something somewhat controversial i think all meetings so like if you have the agenda meeting fine you're going down a list of things and you're minimizing the number of people there that actually need to be there that's a huge thing and you're trying to respect people's time that this is a good way to run a meeting but when you have unstructured meetings where you're doing brainstorming when you're doing r d when you're doing all these things you have to have a good referee yes um, that is able to you know basically take two ideas one is be able to recognize when people have something to say and they're not saying it and be able to stop the room and be like what do you think what do you think what do you think what do you think and make sure everyone gets their input out um, because everyone's going to have thoughts and and not to put everyone on the spot uh you know and, and force them to talk but you know everyone has you know everyone's input is valuable in some way even if you think the idea is silly or something usually the best ideas come out of someone giving a silly idea and someone else going like you know what <laughs> hold on most of that i don't agree with but this one thing you know and then and then you go off in the, these crazy directions but the other side of it is being able to facilitate a respectful conversation that can have at its core fundamental disagreements from every single person at the table right and be able to to really chunk through all of those you know disagreeing opinions and be able to have that respectful conversation and, and one of the things that i've learned uh in going from doing all of this in person to doing it all in chat rooms is you need to be able to do it in both situations and you need to run meetings in both areas because what you do is you develop a voice for all of your people in chat in in the in the meeting where you can tell oh when this person speaks this way they're not being disrespectful they're just being you know matter of fact or whatever mm -hmm. and that's one of the things that can create this really uh we'll call it eggshells company culture is when people get the impression that if when they're speaking they're going to be perceived as being combative um and then people you know kind of close up and so when you have this referee that's able to say like i don't think they said i don't think they meant that or they didn't mean that you know let's just keep working through or they didn't mean it that way or whatever when when people get the idea that all we're doing is being honest and having opinions and having differing opinions is fine um you know and then someone's going to make a decision and that's the direction we're all going in that's kind of the key piece to meetings and especially those meetings where you're doing brainstorming and stuff in my mm -hmm. opinion so I, I think every meeting has to have a reasonable referee, whether that's the agenda keeper or just the person that everybody in the room can look to to say, uh, help. <laughs> right. So I think you make fantastic points on that gallery to where uh, your, your referee, we would typically call that just the meeting mod. And whether the meeting mod is the person uh, not only communicating on in person, the other point of a, a good meeting would also be a good note taker, because if not all your assets are there, they need to be able to make sure they can catch up. So a good note taker. So you've got meeting minutes. No, or the so show notes. I'm going to disagree. I, oh, go on. <laughs> go on. Last, last, my last point is also uh, in certain situations, having the meeting recorded. So if somebody wants to read the physical room of how this person is answering or uh, questioning uh, how this is going to be moving forward, note taking is one deal. Being able to see the video on it is another as well. And go ahead, so. so. I'm going to throw out a few things. First and foremost, I hate recording meetings. I think recording <laughs> meetings is one of the worst things that you can possibly yep. do, depending on the discussion, because immediately everyone goes, this is now set in stone forever. It even took us four on these videos to start talk talking normally to each other because we knew every single word we're talking is going to be recorded forever. And that's nerve wracking. <laughs> Yeah, it took us like a year to be comfortable. Yeah. And now, like that, that sense of the you know self moderation, with the exception of Gulo. <laughs> 
Well, yeah, so here, here's, 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 here's the other thing. I've been since the beginning. <laughs> so here's, here's the other thing I was going to say, though. It's like, I think recording is a terrible idea. I think note-taking, like, here, here's, you want to hear the worst part of the pandemic, and maybe this is probably the worst way of saying it. You want to hear the absolute worst part of the pandemic. It was because everyone became a professional collaborate, like remote collaborator. I yeah. have been working in this field remote for 15 years, more than that, I think, at this point, where I have always been a remote resource working out of my office. And then the pandemic hit. And again, probably, okay, the worst. Okay, I get it. Someone's going to like audio clip that and be like, this man on YouTube says that the worst part of pandemic is the people. But like, as everyone became an expert collaborator. And somehow, because they were the ones who sent out the Zoom call, they felt they were the ones who had to run the meeting. And historically, we use conference calls. We didn't do video. You don't need video. I don't need to see you in the morning. Here's like the, here is my pillars, my commandments to running meetings. You set the meeting between 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. There's never a time to do it before 10 a.m. And there's never a time to do it after 4 p.m. Unless there's an absolute necessity. You start it mm -hmm. on time. time. Zones. Yeah, time, time zones. zones you, know, for, you know, forget uh, that. But for, yeah. no, with time zones, same thing. But here's the thing is, even if they're on Pacific time and I'm in the East Coast, you set it for 4 p.m. at the latest or noon at the earliest. Like you have a smaller window. Again, it can become difficult. I get it. But you start on time. Gator, this is where my comment to you comes in with note taking and all that. You want to take notes and whatnot. But here's the Bring kicker. It. You start it on time. You take attendance. Is everyone there who's needed to get this meeting kicked off? If not, you... You ping them and you wait two minutes. If they're not there, you close down and reschedule. That's it. Two minutes. You start on time. You start the meeting. You're here. You're here. You're here. You're here. Next thing, you know, we're on this call to accomplish this thing. You accomplish that goal and then you hang up. There is nothing yes. else you add to that. Right. Absolutely. No, I, it's, it's so, so funny. Anyone who's ever on a call with me, the first thing I do, if especially if it'll be like on clients, never met the client before, we're kicking off a project, kicking off a massive project. Right. I jump in. The first thing I say is, let's just assume we're all friends here. We have great weather. And if you don't have weather, let's just pretend it's great. And let's jump in because the agenda <laughs> of this call is to kick off this project. In order to kick that off, you know, Bob, what do you need to kick that off? Well, what I need is I need the URL. I need credentials. I can go, great. I go, all of that information, you're going to send in an email after this call so they have it in their inbox and they have everything they need. Great. Bob, is there anything else we need to get this thing kicked off? No? Okay. Client A, do you have any questions for Bob while he's on the call? No. Excellent. I'm good on my end. You're good on your end. You're good on your end. And then you close up the call. Everyone and, get the fuck out. And it's like, <laughs> it is a, it, you, and that's the thing is you accomplish it and you're done. And what has happened, this just happened on Friday and it baffled me. Hey guys, it looks like we're 15 minutes early. Like, actually it happened in a meeting there. The other one, ha now I'm just like, I'm, this is my therapy session. Happened <laughs> at sounds like it's my daughter's school. Yeah. My daughter's school, there was an hour Google long meeting dying. to like onboard people and everything like that. We we're 50 minutes in. And the guy says this. He goes, it's, it's 10. It looks like we ended 10 minutes early. We've never ended 10 minutes early before. This is incredible. We've never done 10 minutes early. Like normally we go over. And when we go over, usually people get to their next thing late. So I guess, uh, I mean, I have this great story and what we're, I'm going to share this no. story with you. And he goes on and then we ended up being late. He like legitimately like ranted for 10 minutes on how early it was. It was like, no, just, just end it. Just leave. We're great. Like, yeah. You know what, Silk? You know what's really funny about this? And then I'm going to give it to Gulo because he was dying to talk. When we have one-on-one -on -one calls, they're never 10 minutes. <laughs> they're like three hours. <laughs> Yeah, but we don't have an agenda. You have to set the agenda if you're going to have a call in a work environment. Gulo. We're in a meeting. This yeah, is I a know. meeting right it's now. A, we had yeah. an agenda and everything you just said, we don't do. This is... <laughs> we, we have this meeting all Hold the on. time. No, you're this, the referee. We this have is, an agenda and we're just like, screw it. This is a hangout. Water cooler style meeting. Yeah, water cooler style meeting. This is a hangout. Not a meeting. There is nothing we accomplish here outside of hanging out. I always question why are people watching this? 
Oh yeah, we don't accomplish anything here other than to just you know <laughs> rail on each other <laughs> and just make fun of each other for an hour. Well, the the funniest part is what no one gets to see on these calls, and here's like a behind the scenes is one in that like couple minute countdown beforehand. I swear, like I'm about to come in and I need to like say hey, welcome back, and they're just chatting in the background or like. This morning, I'm setting up thumbnails and whatnot, and it's like, hey, we're echoing. Where's the link? Where do I I'm like, I just want to get started. Oh, it's just awesome. I, you I like guys everyone awesome. logs in 15 you. minutes early, and then you, without a doubt, within the first five minutes, we're all like, what the hell are we talking about this morning? <laughs> I, okay. So that that's 100% me. I've now pinned it in the channel, so when we need to join the link, it's there, and I never know what we're talking about. I don't like knowing what we're talking about beforehand because then I might actually do research. I would rather just sit here and pull crap out of thin air and be more genuine to myself because that's how I generally do everything in my life. Oh, so I'm going to pose the question then. Would the four of us have a healthy company culture if we worked at the same company? Oh, no. So... <laughs> no, not, okay. without a doubt, Just, no. No. I don't know that I would agree or disagree with that because if when you're talking about your managers or you're talking about moderators, a good mod will do exactly what Silk said and call out different people in the room if they're reading the room. If somebody's being quiet in the corner, always muted, and you know they've got subjects or different uh, opinions on something, you could absolutely have that mod reach out and do so. So could we work really well in the company together? I think it's a strong possibility. Do we have vastly different, uh, we'll say, characteristics of each other or or attitudes? Yes, absolutely. I, I would get say shit done. Hundred percent. I'm gonna take. I'm gonna say one thing, and you're all gonna agree with me. Money between friends is a terrible idea. Okay, so uh, I would, so I would, I would say making money between oh. friends is a great idea. <laughs> yeah, <enough>. Spending money <laughs> and putting a business together is a terrible idea. <laughs> I mean, making I, money between will, friends sounds like a prostitution use, ring. That's exactly <laughs> what they're thinking too. I'll, I'll, I'll wager this though, and I, I mean, and again, you say I'm going to say one thing. We. If you can survive DEF CON for four days in close proximity while running Darknet together, like, I feel like that's the trial by fire you go through <laughs> to know, like, is this a thing? But no, I don't know. I have a, I have a weird mix of whether or not, like, business with friends makes sense. I think it can go. Business with family is a terrible idea. There's never oh, a good God. time. Business with family is a good idea. I've made that mistake. I will not make it again. It's an interesting learning experience. I think everybody should do it once because you'll never do it again. Is my two cents worth? <laughs> no, we're we're all adult human beings with functional brains. You can le you can learn from other people's mistakes. So, <laughs> I'm going to I'm going to bring this back to an interesting point though. This is like one of those fundamental things which happens that no one acknowledges. And then we're bringing it back to company culture right here. We are all humans with emotions, and most of those emotions don't make a lot of sense. <coughs> Excuse me. Example, I came onto this call before we started, and I'm like, I'm sick, I'm tired, but I really want to hang out with you. So it's one of those things, but like at work in a small company, you have people dealing with stresses of real life. You have employees who are sick and dealing with sick kids. You have this, and then they're be stressed for whatever reason. You're like, hey, is it a work, you know, what can I help with? What, what's going on at work? And you realize they're just like, they're just stressed because things going on. And I think as a company culture, one of the things you motive, you, you drive is you go, you think, all right, I want to have this employee for years and years and years to come. What can I do in this moment to help them out? But most businesses will say like enterprise businesses starts forgetting the fact that like you're dealing with actual people and people. not yeah. just a number in a database. So that's, when hmm. so the teams that i work with i can be very bullheaded I, i'm very stubborn i'm very stubborn but when i'm working with people if anyone on any of my teams reach out to me and like hey can you help me with this or hey do you know how to bypass this whatever i'm doing i'm like cool yeah let me sit down let me walk you through this let me help Wait, you oh, out. Oh, let hold me on really quick squiddy what is the show
Squiddy me- no. message. I have another sure. amazing yeah. show. I need to take off. I'm curious no, what it is saying, before you do. No, he's saying our show is amazing. Oh, he has to never off. mind. Thank you. Oh, Squiddy. well, in that case, Squiddy, I will All talk right. to you later. <laughs> Re- <See> restart <laughs> your thought. Sorry, Gulo. <laughs> I was so excited. What's more sure, amazing than good. us? <laughs> so anyone, anyone on any of my teams can approach me. Just direct message me. If you message me through a public chat room or you're not emailing me, private message me on Slack, on email or whatever, and I will help you out. If it is middle management, my boss, some company structure that's requesting something that's out of band, the answer is almost always, no, I can't do that. I'm too busy because I don't want the business expecting me to go well above and beyond what I'm already going above and beyond on. I will help out anyone in the company as like a one-on-one thing. No problem. hundred percent company starts asking me for random weird things that are outside of scope of everything. Yeah. Hard pass hard. So, yeah. So to, this, absolutely this is to your what point. I, good. No. So this is what I was going to say was, you know, my last business, I was hourly. Right. So, and that means I build the company hourly and I, you know, it was a pseudo salary position where I, you know, would make a certain salary, but I had to make 40. And if I didn't make 40, you know, I didn't make 40 hours worth of my salary or I had to make those hours up the next week or whatever. And that w- at first was nice because it meant every hour over 40 I worked, I got paid. And I was like, hell, I can increase my salary by just working more. Cool. This is great. Um, and eventually that turned into being really difficult to make my 40 and then every time I ate, you know, three or four hours in one week where I was short, I'd make it up the following week and then I'd be exhausted. Right. And and that uh, push and pull. Now, let's compare that to my current company where I'm just straight salary. It's not like it, it's not like no one's no one's accounting on an hourly level. Right. But I probably work a about as much, if not more, it's just structured differently throughout the day. And yesterday, and this goes to what Silk was saying, um, this week was a really stressful week for me. I ended up doing like a 12 hour day where I was trying to get something in QMU working and, and it's like all experimental stuff and it wasn't working right. I had to dig into kernel code, I had to dig into driver code, stuff I've never looked at before. And it's like rapid acquisition of, of knowledge and it was exhausting and stressful. And then my guitarist i had a gig yesterday and my guitarist got sick thursday thursday his wife got sick wednesday then he thought he was getting sick on thursday so i had to go do a set solo by myself and this is the first set i've ever done solo so i I, and i was just like i don't have enough songs i gotta learn four songs on thursday so i spent all of thursday night learning music hoping that uh, my guitarist wasn't gonna gonna be sick. I wake up on Friday. He tells me about noon. He's like, "Yeah, I, I caught it, so I can't go." I was like, "Well, uh, all right. I think I'm clocking out early today to to go work on these songs and then go work on my set." And the whole company was just like, "Cool, see you later." And I was like, "Oh my god, like this is awesome!" Like, yeah. And then I logged in this morning just to like write up some notes for an hour or two to make sure that I got my thoughts down. And I was like, Oh, this is like way better than having to track my hours on a, on a day to day basis. And I have to worry about that. Cause as, as I like to say, I get my shit done. Um, and that's really all that matters to a business. And it's, that's that business culture that I'm talking about. The structure of a business where all the business cares about is that you clock your 40. And if you don't, you don't make that money. Or if you do, you know, I know that at the corporate level at my last business, they, uh, they had a rule that you had to work at least 48 hours before you would ever get overtime. So everything between 40 and 40, 47 or 47.5 or whatever, 47.9, that was unpaid, right? You could be, yeah. you could be asked to work up to 47 and not get paid that extra seven hours. And I was like, you ever take, you ever do that to me? I'm getting out of here. Right. Yeah. It, so I, I'm a horrible manager, horrible. Holding, <laughs> you, you never want me managing people. I am a great wrench turner. Um, I've been salary for 30 years now. That's a long time. So I, I keep track of my oh, hours on my salary now to make sure that I'm not like putting in 80 hours a week because yeah. I'm OCD and I'll completely forget. But when I manage people, one of the things that I tell them is I'm like, I'm very results driven. I care about having something done 
and I don't care about how much time you work on it. If I assign you a task, I will try to give you a deadline and I expect you to hit that deadline and I try to be reasonable when I can. I don't care if it takes you 12 hours to do it or two hours to do it. If you do it in two hours, then I need you to sit there and pretend like you're working so I don't get yelled at because you're slacking <laughs> off for at least another six hours and we're good. Yeah, it's it, it's an interesting balance because I in in some ways I first and foremost I don't I think the hourly thing is silly like any anything in the technology space I think it's just silly uh, because work is going to naturally expand to fill that space if I give my daughter ten minutes to clean her room eh, it will get there but it won't be great. If I give her four days to clean her room, it's going to stay messy for all four days. And it's, it's like a natural this <laughs> natural phenomenon. Work expands to meet it. So I, I think – and also I don't think with life, hour, hours work, like especially working from home, doesn't make any sense. So like that's, that, that's a tenant for our company. And some of that, go falls back to communication. Like you have multiple levels of communication. There is, you know, urgent, something happened, life's on fire – I'm going to send a phone call or text message or something like that. Understanding, especially if it's outside work hours, that my expectation even then is very different than if it was like during work hours. Where, again, because there is set, set office hours, but I have employees who, who work, wake up at like 5 a.m. like crazy people and then work till like 2 or whatever they end. And, and it's like it's this drop dead unless something happens. Emails like USPS. I send them an email a eh, couple days. I don't expect to hear back right away. But that uh, that culture, and that is a culture thing of the expectation for work getting done, does get right. built up over time. Because something Gulo said was, it, it is only a project if there's an actual deadline associated with it. If there's sure. no deadline yep. associated with it, it's just a concept, an area of expertise or something like that. But yeah. that entire thing is a remarkably difficult balance. And I think it comes, one, we'll say, from the top down. And because, again, like I would like to think that part of my job, or actually is part of my job at the company, is being HR, like legitimately showing, as weird as this sounds, showing here, here is how you make sure someone's okay. And that might be, hey, push that project for next week. Hey, I'm feeling this. Great. Like, like let's... Do you need to talk about that or do you just need time? What do you need? What can I do to yeah. make you be more successful? The concept's yes. called intrusive so, leadership, but yeah. It was it so intrusive this, leadership? Yeah. And what, can you define that? Because I don't actually I mean, know. Like, intrusive leadership is, is uh, I mean, functionally, it's like you are as a leader in some sense intruding into other people's lives to ensure mm -hmm. that they're okay right not with the intent of owning everything that they do but just be like hey man you look like you're having a rough time right now do you need extra time is there anything you want to talk about is there anything that, that's going on and then uh, you know having the ability to say like you know give them resources to help them in other areas of their life other than just work in the with the intent of hopefully retaining that employee and having them do additional work so it, it's it's a concept that you know the military tries to tries to sell. They take it too far, but uh, the mm -hmm. concept is sound. I think it, it's, so to, to it's pull a hard back, balance. Going, yeah. it is a hard balance. Um, to pull back on a couple things on creating the company culture, I absolutely agree with Gulo when it comes to uh, with the communication of being able to reach out to a coworker and say, "Hey, bro, I am out of my field on this. Can you lend me a hand to see if I'm going down the right path?" Or, hey, I need an additional hand because I'm dealing with like three, seven, three or three, seven ones right now. Can I offload one of them to you so I can continue to work with the customer? So communication, uh, being able to reach out to other coworkers. One thing that I love about my company working in the open source industry is that the openness, there's not a, a expectation of expertise in everything. So if you know of somebody else that has got that expertise and you say, hey, do you have the bandwidth to help me with this? They can absolutely help own that and then be able to continue get to the end goal uh when it comes to the whole management style of uh thing i have this the first time i've heard of intrusive management uh leadership. i find it just being or in, intrusive leadership thanks uh when it comes to that there is the uh the open organization book which is fantastic in my opinion uh, there are so many different things in the book that highlights hey 
here's how you're able to check in with not only your your if you're managing with your employees that are working underneath you, uh, whether you're a team lead or if you're just a coworker trying to check in on your other folks, make sure, hey, are you OK? Is your workload too heavy? How can I help? Um, being able to have that open communication makes a huge difference and without the expectation of there being lashback. Other com company cultures, if you didn't get everything assigned that you were assigned, um, then you were just, you were left behind, right? There was no communication or very little communication to start with versus the smart goals are what I've helped drive at this point. So it is time sensitive. You've got an end goal and you've got these different formats. And for me, it's always talking about do you have a framework that your company or your group is working with? Whether that's agile, whether that's it'll, whether whatever else, if you find a framework that works for your team and everybody knows that's the playbook, that has helped immensely to move things forward. I also have one of my pet peeves at work is soft, soft deadlines versus hard deadlines. Mm. A lot of the business is like, you need to have this done by this date. And when I ask why they just say because versus, hey, there is an event like E3 or GDC that we have to have a booth built for. That is a hard deadline. I can't push that deadline. I may have to kill myself to hit that deadline. And I understand that. But if you create a soft deadline that is ridiculous, I am going to fight tooth and nail for as long as I can until you make it a more reasonable deadline. And I think Silk was talking about that best of hey, if my guys are sick and I need to push a deadline, I'll push a deadline. And that's freaking, yep. I would love to work someplace like that. That's phenomenal. I mean, yeah, there's, there. I would feel like there's different aspects when it comes down to de deadlines and things like that. I mean, it's something which is kind of a weird way of saying it though too is since it's my company, no, no, I want to say I will always care more about the company than all of my employees. Why? Yeah. Because it's my company. Now that's a weird statement, but like it's a true one. Like it's my, it's my company. And at one point, if the employee does care more than me, one, there's something really wrong there. But like, with the understanding that I, I need to make them care. Like my job is to help them care about the company, whether it's financially, whether it's through benefits, whether it's through a good work life balance, a good culture. Like my goal is to retain an, if they're a good employee, my goal is to retain that employee. And especially with a small company, everyone has to be rowing in the same direction. If you got if you have a person who's not pulling their weight, then all of a sudden it's like this, the whole culture can real bad hires can legitimately can wreck the whole culture of a company. So it's, I don't know, that was kind of a weird rant, but it is a piece of this is like, your goal, your manager's goal is to somehow figure out a way to make you care about the work effort. Yeah. And I always something like to, you oh, know, the something... only other, go ahead. I was gonna say the only thing, other, other thing I was going to add, um, Gulo had mentioned, oh, I lost it. That's all right. I'm, I'm sending it back to you. Yeah. No. So I was going to say something that, uh, oh man, I didn't hear this phrase until command code said it to me probably in my late twenties. Some at some point, uh, I was uh, asking him for some advice uh, on either was a, like a leadership position type thing or uh, uh, a management position, and I, you know, it's just like I don't know that I like managing people. And he just very quickly snapped back and said, "You manage work, you lead people," and I was just like, "Well, shit, that is, <laughs> yeah, you're damn." Um, but I I was thinking back uh, to what you were saying. We said we had a stream. I forget. Um, it was just you and I shooting the shit and you said, you know, there's all of these great books on parenting that can teach you lots and lots of lessons. I have read none of them. Uh, <laughs> 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 um, and I, I, I kind of think about the same in the same way. Oh, like, I'm sure that there are a lot of courses out there that will teach you to be leaders and, and teach you to be, or attempt to teach you to be managers, attempt to teach you to be leaders. But the reality is you have to be a relatively compassionate person to be an effective leader on a day we, we call them deck plate leaders but on a day-to-day -day, uh leadership man, uh, you know time frame um you know if you're leading at the top of a company at the ceo i'm sorry you got to be a cutthroat person to be at that level because you're you're talking about like oh we're going to axe this entire portion of the business and lay off three thousand people like 
you can be a compassionate person in that situation, it's going to make your job so much harder, right? Because your job is to manage the business and your job is not to necessarily lead people at that level. And that's a really hard position. And I neither want that position, nor do I think most CEOs are worth the pay that they get. Uh, but uh, <laughs> at the, you know, we'll say the deck plate level, it's, it's an interesting uh, perspective of that, uh, you know, like you were saying, is you got to be able to recognize when people are having human days that you need to just be able to like, what are you doing here? Get the hell out of here. And it, if at a minimum your company, the business structure is incapable of accommodating that, I would call your business a failure. No matter how successful you are and how much money you're making, if your business is incapable of providing people that basic level of, of, of human interaction and human you know, survivability, your business is a failure. It's not going to last. Mm -hmm. the, the thing I, I, was gonna, I was laughing at and then I'll hand it to Gulo is you, you mentioned you have to be cutthroat. There's a reason I have a business partner. My business partner is fan-freaking-tastic. And I realize, I recognize I can't do that. I just can't. And there is the problem where my business partner has said things to me. Like, because I've known my business partner even before starting this company. And he's used a phrase with me as, you're being used like toilet paper right now by this person. And you have to be able to say no to that. And it's interesting because, like, again, I want to... Uh, it's you've seen my personality. It's oftentimes like, okay, yeah, I can take that eye and do that. And it's it's like, no, you need to push that off to someone else. Uh, but yeah, that that aspect of the business, it is remarkably hard. And I would say, like, it's also something I don't even want. Just speaking yeah. bluntly. Go on. Go I mean, on. I'm not even. I'm not even sure anyone on the stream would want or do well at that side of the business. I mean, we're all people, people, I guess. I mean, I'm a, I'm a horrible manager, horrible, horrible, horrible manager, but I'm a fantastic leader. I will get people excited about random crap and we'll just go to town working on it. But yeah, the <laughs> totally, totally. And I don't care. Shut up. The, uh, <laughs> it's, Darknet. Darknet's a great example of this. Going to DEF CON, just getting excited about something and then other people that are like-minded. I can't get everyone excited about everything that I'm excited about, especially at work because well, I usually don't get to pick people because that'd be bad. Um, so it's <laughs> getting excited about something and then working on it so other people get excited about it as well. And that's where I excel at, but managing people, no, that Anything that breathes should not be managed by me. <laughs> I think, <laughs> I, I, honestly, I think building a company culture takes time. I think it is the, the biggest thing I've learned from my business partner is this whole penny wise, pound foolish. You can make short, you can make short term wins almost at any company. I can push a specific employee saying it needs to get done today. In once in a while, that has to happen. I get it. Sometimes it's like it has to happen. But you you almost like I'm trying to think of a good analogy for this. You you have this this beaker of love from this employee. Love's the wrong term, but I'm gonna use it anyway. And every time you do that, you take you take a piece of that. And then it takes a lot more time to gain that back over time. And this idea of penny wise pound foolish is I'm I want to invest in an employee who's going to, who wants to be here five years, 10 years, 15 years. And that takes time and you have to take short-term losses in order to get long-term gains. Short-term loss might be like, hey, let's push the product. Hey, you're obviously you're sick and things like that because that's front of mind. But I think oftentimes within culture, you have to take short-term losses to get long-term gains. Uh, and, and that, you know, what's funny is that can also include forcefully removing somebody from your company who is otherwise uh getting results but is creating a toxic culture right? yes right and so those those people where it's like well i can't afford to lose them because they're the only thing holding this piece of technology together but they are a bad influence on the overall culture and causing other people to be miserable if you lose two to three people but you keep that one person you've been 
pennywise pound foolish if you will and so yeah. being like hey man it's not working out get out um, i i, I could not hard. you're you're hitting it right on the head where it's like i'd rather have an employee who is a good team member like i, I mainly i'm thinking of someone and i know someone who's wa who was watching the stream earlier who we hired and that's one of my favorite things about them they 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 work with the team so well like they were the one of the first hires we had who we didn't know them when we're in a small company i know this person they're coming on i know this person they're coming on this person knows this person they're coming on this was a person who was introduced completely through youtube which is just freaking phenomenal to me reached out and hired them and they've they've been awesome and it's because they interact with the team skill set they're not they're not like the top or anything they weren't even necessarily a position we were looking for they're but they worked yet. they're not there they're working towards it yeah. and i would rather they're have not. this this person who interacts great with the team and fits with the culture more than someone who's more skilled or something like that i know that sounds weird but like ah I, you you hit it right on the head with that one to your point you have positions and time frames that you want that culture fit is more important because you can teach skill you can't teach in most cases you either have the culture and you understand the culture that can be trained over time but if you don't have that mindset to start with that's got to be something that's developed which means you need to be in that environment so then you're taking a risk can i build the right culture for this person to understand versus if they already have that walking in Dude, you could skill up any and every single day, all day, whether that's a six months of, hey, go take these classes, kick ass, take names, and we'll see it skilled up at the end because the culture fit is already there. Yeah, their communication skills are, communication skills are hard to teach. They can be taught, but that was one of the things, the selling points is how great, how hearing the passion and their communication skills are so much higher than any, anyone else we were talking about. I Hell always, yeah. like for and maybe this will put a button on it uh communication skills when i left my last company i sent out an email that kind of summarized things with have opinions make mistakes uh accept your mistakes adjust and continue having big opinions and big ideas uh, because if you're if you're creating a culture that is accepting not a, you're not necessarily going to run off and do everyone's big idea but if you're at least entertaining people's big ideas and then trying to find interesting things to work on out of those things, uh, you're going to find a lot more respect built up amongst your cohort, right? So have big, you know, have big ideas, have big opinions, be okay debating those opinions and not being offended by people who have differing opinions, make mistakes, get into good trouble and, you know, Make sure that you are providing, you know, we'll say top cover or you know cover for your your uh, for your workmates that maybe you disagree with, right? You may disagree with somebody's idea, but if their idea gets picked up and the business decides to run with it, that's the idea you run with it. You might disagree, but that doesn't mean you do a, a worse you know work on it just because you disagree with it. Good trouble, really? Yeah, good trouble. <laughs> You know, don't go out and get arrested for doing a line of, you know, a, like a mountain of coke. <laughs> That's bad trouble, right? Why? It's <laughs> another <laughs> fun and excitement. <laughs> oh, goodness. With that, Gator, what do you what do you got for us? I just got to say, if you're going to do a line of coke, isn't that in a bottle, man? You just you drink it out of the never mind. So uh, with company culture, one of the things that I want to make sure to drive home is that you're the start. Your managers can be crap. Your coworkers can be crap. But if you're being the positive influence, you have spheres. One of the things that when it comes to like uh, open source culture, when it comes to just working in, in different communities, you are the positive effect of change and be empowered by that. If you can get one third of the people to back you, work together with you, you can make amazing results happen. So make sure to go love your hacker family. Um, I I need to inject though. I I I, I think I, I I like what you're saying, and I would be the first. I I, I feel like I'd be a person I absolutely agree. Like you can, you can be a change, but I would caveat that with certain companies are not worth your time or oh, your yes, effort. Yes, one hundred percent. Yep. And you leave those companies. There are certain things in yes. your life 
whether it's company or not, and you cut those things out like a toxic cancer, and you move on, oh, yeah. and it's not your job to fix them. Sorry, that was I agree one hundred. And I'll leave, 100%. I'll leave it with this. I'll leave it with this. A, a good company with a gold, good culture yesterday can be a bad company with a bad culture today, right? And being able to recognize when to cut that out and leave uh, is really important. And that's my parting thought. Gulo. A mountain of Coke makes me twitchy and my boogers taste funny. Interesting. With that, culture is one of those things which I think you do have to develop over time. I think communication is key. As always, I love hanging out with you all. Thank you for those watching on stream, listening on podcast. Thank you for watching and hack on.